Hi everyone, Ms. Robin here for a fantastic learning session. I hope you are as excited as I am. Today you will need paper, a pencil, and colored pencils or crayons if you would like. You are all familiar with multiplying fractions by whole numbers, but today I want to explore multiplying fractions by fractions. We know that fractions are a part of a whole, and when we multiply two whole numbers together, the product is larger than both of the whole numbers. We also know that when we multiply a whole number by a fraction, we get an answer that is between the fraction and the whole number. So what can we predict will happen with the product of two fractions? Exactly, the product will be smaller than both of the fractions multiplied. I wonder why this is. Let's look at a model to better understand what's happening when we multiply fractions by fractions. For our demonstration, let us use 1 3rd times 3 fifths. We could also say 1 3rd of 3 fifths. What does that mean, 1 3rd of 3 fifths? Yes, it means that I need 1 3rd of 3 fifths of a whole. So, what would that look like as a model? First, I need a whole. Everyone draw a whole. Now, let's divide it into fifths and shade three of them to represent three fifths. Your fraction area model should look something like this. Now, we need to find one third of three fifths. Thinking about this, I can divide this same whole into thirds the opposite way and shade one of them. So this shaded region of the area model represents three fifths and this shaded region represents one third. So what would the overlapping portion of the area model show? Exactly, it shows one third of three fifths or one third times three fifths. What fraction of the whole is the shaded region representing? Excellent, three fifteenths. Looking at the model, we can see that when we divide it into both fifths and thirds, we created fifteenths, and the overlap of the shading is three of those pieces. Drawing a model helps us to understand what is happening with the math. But let's write the algorithm on our chart too. One third of three fifths, or one third times three fifths. We can write it as two separate fractions, but then we can change it to put the two numerators together and the two denominators together, which will give us a product of three fifteenths. Now, let's look at multiplying fractions in real life. My grandpa was a farmer, and he had one third of an acre of farmland. He grew tomatoes on one fourth of that land. On how many acres did my grandpa grow tomatoes? Well, looking at our anchor chart, we know that we need to draw out a model for one third of an acre. That should look like this. Next, we need to find one fourth of that one third. So we can draw fourths over the whole and shade in one fourth of it. Now, how many total pieces did we create? Exactly, 12. Of those 12, how many are shaded by both the third and the fourth? Great, one. So my grandpa grew tomatoes on one twelfth of an acre. How can we write this using multiplication? Yes, indeed. We can write one third times one fourth, or one times one over three times four, which will give us a product of one twelfth. Let's do one more example of multiplying fractions by fractions. Brian was eating some pizza left over from dinner the night before. He opened the pizza box to find two thirds of a pizza. He ate one half of the remaining two thirds. How much of the whole pizza did Brian eat? Okay, explorers, let's think about where to start. What was the question asking us to find? Yes, how much of the whole pizza Brian ate? Since I know that he ate one half of two thirds of a pizza, what strategy can we use to figure out how much of the whole pizza he ate? 
Great, we can multiply. So we have one half of two thirds, or one half times two thirds. Let's draw an area model to help us visualize the multiplication. So we have two thirds of a pizza represented here. Now we need to find one half of it. So we divide the whole into a half and shade one of them. How many pieces did multiplying two thirds by one half create? Yes, six. How many of those pieces are shaded by both one half and two thirds? Yes, two. So Brian ate two sixths of the entire pizza. How could we rewrite the equation to make multiplying easier? Perfect, we could write one times two over two times three. And when we multiply, we find that the answer is the same as our model. Good work. Now, let's flip this thinking a bit. What would happen if I used fractions in division? Interesting answers, explorers. Let's do some exploring with a real world problem. Mr. James has five bunches of grapes that he is giving his students for snack. A serving is one fourth of a bunch. How many students can he serve grapes? With this problem, we see that Mr. James needs to divide his five bunches of grapes into one fourth servings. If I wrote an expression, it would look like this, five divided by one fourth. How could I draw a model to represent this? Nice thinking. I would start with what I am dividing, the five bunches of grapes. Let's represent that with these five squares. Now, I need to divide this into groups of one fourth. After all, that's what division is, the dividing of an amount into equal groups. So, how could I do that? Great, divide each bunch into one fourth and count the total groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Mr. James can serve snack to 20 students with his five bunches of grapes. Now, let's change it up just a bit more. I had one third of a gallon of milk in my fridge and I divided it into four mugs of coffee. What fraction of a gallon of milk did I put into each mug of coffee? How is this problem different from the problem we just completed? Yes, this problem has us dividing a fraction by a whole number. Let's write the equation, one third divided by four. Now, how could I draw a model of this? Nice thinking. We can do it exactly as before, where we start with the value that is being divided, one third. We can represent the gallon of milk with this square and then divide it into three equal parts, shading in one of them as I had one third of a gallon of milk. Now we need to divide this one third into four equal groups. How might I do that? Fantastic. We draw four equal parts, but while I'm dividing, I should just do the entire whole. One, two, three, and four equal groups. This is a beautiful model, but how does it help me solve? Let's find one group of one third after we divided it by four. Here is one group, two groups, and three, three groups, and four groups. What is the value of one group? Yes, one twelfth. So each mug of coffee received one twelfth of a gallon of milk. We did some amazing work today. It was really amazing to see how drawing a fraction model showed me why the product gets smaller when I multiply fractions by other fractions. It creates smaller pieces. It was also amazing to see what happens when I use fractions in division. But how awesome to know that even when I divide with fractions, it's still all about dividing a total value into those equal groups. Thanks for tuning in, Math Explorers. Have a great day. Thank you.